might be seated and turn to the book of Romans this morning. The book of Romans, chapter number 13. Romans, chapter number 13. Romans 13. Hopefully this will be an uh, interesting message for you today. Probably a little different uh, message for July the 4th, but uh, hopefully it will be... Uh, encouraging, uh, maybe even eye-opening in some ways of what God has to say. Now, we're going we're gonna to start here in Romans, and it's amazing really what God says about uh, politics and government, uh, how he wants us to respond to government, how government is supposed to work. Uh, the book of Proverbs has a number of, of passages dealing with uh, politics and government, how a king is supposed to rule. We've actually spent some time on, on some of those. We're going to look at one again today, this morning, and uh, to remind you of that. But uh, it's amazing what the Bible has to say about politics and about uh, government and uh, how government is supposed to run. Um, can I tell you a uh, uh, little something here this morning that our government in many ways has got away from the way God created it to be? It's very sad. It's very sad. I, I grieve for our country. Uh, we uh, are in a very sad way. Thank the Lord it's still the greatest country on the face of the earth. Uh, and there's a lot of goodness. There's a lot of righteousness. But there is just, we, you know, we kick God out of everything, basically. And when you kick God out of everything, things start going downhill, let me tell you. Uh, you, uh, you take God out of your life. Your life's getting ready to go downhill. Uh, you, you take God out of a family, that family's getting ready to suffer. You take God out of a, out of a, uh, a government, out of a nation. And uh, it's blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Well, the idea is uh, the, the nation whose God is not the Lord is not blessed. And uh, that's, that's very true, so we understand that. So this morning, um, um, again, maybe a little bit different kind of message. Um, and, you know, I, I've even been accused at times of, well, you know, the politics doesn't need to be in the church. It doesn't. What in the world is wrong with that? They talk about the separation of church and state. Let me remind you again that the separation of church and state has been turned backwards in our society today. Uh, it's not that the uh, church uh, cannot be involved in the state. It's supposed to be that the state is not involved in the church. That's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, but, boy, we have got it backwards. And again, I mentioned last week that Louisiana has started the, uh, uh, putting the Ten Commandments in every place. Uh, you know, they're going to get sued to the hilt. Uh, you know they are. Isn't, it, isn't that a shame? It's a shame. Now, many of us, if, if you're my age or older, I mean, we grew up, the Ten Commandments was in our classrooms. Amen. We got up every morning and, and, and said the pledge. Uh, uh, and, and much of my school time, not all of it, but much of my school time, we would pray. Uh, uh, it's amazing, but uh, you know we, we've kicked God out of everything, so uh, that's why we've got many of the problems, and, and God has turned so many people over to reprobate minds, and uh, reprobate, to me, means silly, because we've got a bunch of silliness in this world, and in our country, plum silly, when you don't even know what a man is and what a woman is, and, and uh, uh, where uh, men can go into women's locker rooms, and and participate in women's sports just because they say, well, I'm a woman. Well, you know, I'm six foot ten, uh, but uh, that's what I identify as, but it uh, don't look that way, does it? <laughs> so anyhow, it's really a shame. So we're going we're gonna to get into this. That's, that has, I, I, none of that's written on this right here. So what you just heard is uh, just straight out of the heart. So let's see what, uh, if my notes make any sense here today. Uh, as we go through Romans chapter 13 verse 1 let every soul be subject unto the higher powers what's the higher power well that's the government and of course if you know you're familiar enough to know there's local state and federal all right so we understand that every subject be uh, every soul be subject to the higher powers for there is no power but of God the powers that be are ordained of God now, some people have a problem with that, but even, even the, the rulers that you have have been ordained of God in the sense that God has allowed that to take place. 
Uh, again, in the Old Testament, the uh, kings that, that came out of uh, 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 Israel were all bad kings. And God was actually punishing Israel by giving them bad kings. Imagine that. And in Judah, much of that. Uh, but uh, So we need to pray for righteousness. Anyhow, these powers that are ordained of God. All right, verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Father, thank you again for your word and what you have to say about government. And Lord, the institution of, of government. And I pray that uh, you'll give us enlighten, enlightenment today uh, on these matters uh, that are upon my heart. And Lord, thank you for putting them upon my heart. And I pray that you'll bless our time and Lord, bless our nation. We, we need to get back to you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so according to the Bible, all authority comes from God. God actually created government, and government uh, has its place in our world. We, we need government. Uh, those that are in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So God created government. He ordained government, and he instituted it, and the purpose of government is mandated by him. Uh, he, he tells the government here and in other places how they're supposed to act, what they're supposed to do, what their purpose is, all right? Uh, uh, and, and folks, we have got way from away that purpose, let me tell you. Uh, we've got so, much, so many different things that the government does that they don't even need to be doing, but they are, are, are doing these things. The essential role, what government was created for, their, their main purpose, you know, now, uh, uh, building roads is a nice thing and all this kind of stuff, that's, that's all well and good. Thank the Lord for roads. And, and um, if my uh, uh, alderman's watching today, uh, we need a lot of repair out here on the south side. Uh, but uh, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, thank the Lord for roads and all those kind of things. But you know what the main reason for government is? To exercise justice. Justice. Justice means to give each person that which is due him. And see, that can be expressed negatively or positively. Justice is a, uh, can be negative and it can be positive. Uh, uh, the government negatively is to punish evil. That's what the government's here for, to punish evil. And positively, it is to promote good. It is to promote good things. It is to punish evil and promote good things. And under God, God actually gave the government uh, uh, the, the authority of force, of force to mandate uh, uh, to, and, and to punish evil and to pursue and promote good. Think about that. God has given the government authority uh, uh, and, and, and power to use force for the purpose of punishing evil and, re and rewarding good. Now, why does the government have to uh, punish evil? Well, because uh, we have evil people in this world. We have sinners in this world, and we're all sinners uh, but we have, we have some very evil people with, with bad desires to cause problems uh, for other people. We have, we have the Ten Commandments. You know, the Bible says, thou shalt not steal. All right? You ought not to steal from somebody else. No matter what it is, you ought not to steal from it, uh, from them. And, and steal of anything for that matter. And I'm going to say more about that in, in just a moment. Uh, we, we have government for that. 
Uh, you know, if, if people get to run rampant and do evil, then you've got chaos. Somebody's got to put a stop to that. Uh, and God has instituted government to do so. Now, uh, in the Old Testament, there was uh, some government, and then, uh, and, and, but at times, there was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Well, uh, God doesn't want that anymore. He has instituted government, and government is supposed to take care of the bad people and keep them away from the good people. And that's, that's what government is for, uh, to secure the peace. Don't you, don't you folks here this morning want to live in a peaceable world? Don't you want to live in a peaceable neighborhood? Uh, don't you want everybody to do right? And, and of course we do. And let me tell you something. When somebody does wrong, they ought to pay a price for it. Wrongdoers. Uh, the government should institute God's wrath on them for the good of society. And of course the government is supposed to uh, uh, keep us and to defend our borders, uh, and to defend our nation. Our, our government is there uh, to keep evil people from being in our country and, and from being attacked uh, in, our, in, in our country. We're supposed to be able to sit in this building here this morning and not wonder whether there's going to be a bomb dropped on it or not by somebody. Uh, our government is supposed to keep us safe. That's what they're here for. Now that... Folks, that is the main reason that God has given in his word for the government. Think about that. And now we have got all sorts of other things going on uh, in our world. All these different departments for different things. Well, it's all well and good to, a, to an extent. But uh, this is the main reason for the government. Now, you ought to be scared if you're going to do something wrong, right? You ought to be scared. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people are not even scared anymore. Not even scared. And, and, and it's very sad. Uh, uh, you, know, you know why you shouldn't have to be scared of the police? Just do right. Just do right. Then you don't have to be fearful. But a lot of people are. Now, the, so that's the negative uh, aspect. Well, the positive aspect is promoting good and promoting peace protecting peace uh, you know I want to be able to live in in peace I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cause disturbances in my neighborhood uh, I want to live in peace I, and if anybody else wants to cause a disturbance then you know we're gonna have a problem and the government needs to get involved and stop it so people can live in peace matter of fact over in first Timothy chapter 2 Paul told uh, uh, us and every other Christian that we ought to pray for those that are in governmental authority and, and pray for our rulers so that we can lead, listen to me, he said this, you know it, we can lead a quiet and peaceable life. That's what he said. A quiet and peaceable life. So we're supposed to protect those that want to do good and, and, and the government's supposed to go after those that want to do bad. All right? Protect those who do good. Government is to seek, serve, and promote the common good of the people. And listen to me. Do you know that government is not there to promote the good of the rulers? It is there to promote the good of the people. That's very important. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, any, anything that's done, uh, harm done to another person, is a violation of their human dignity. And again, somebody should get involved in that. And stop that. Now, so government's supposed to go after those that are good or bad. But you know what they're supposed to do to those that are good? They're supposed to praise them. They're supposed to praise them. Uh, they're they're uh, uh, supposed to encourage order by upholding the rule of law. When a law is made, the government is supposed to uphold that law. Not, you know, and, you know, if, if a government official don't like the law, then they say, well, you know, I'm just not going to enforce that. Well, that's not right. That's not looking after the people. That's looking after yourself. And the state must also must always encourage law and order, never disorder or lawlessness. Now, saying all that, I say this. The role of the government should be limited. Should be limited. Uh, there's two other 
organizations that God created. All right, He created government, but He also created the family. And God instituted the rules for the family. It's supposed to be a, a man and a woman get married till death do you part, and, and then they have children, and those children are to obey their parents, and, and then those children grow up and they get their own home. God set up the rules for that. A man and a woman to be faithful to each other all of those, all their years until death does them part. Uh, but the role of government is limited uh, uh, in, in, in the family. The role of government uh, is also the church is the other organization that God has created. And he set up rules for that. And, and see, the government, the state, should only be involved in those two other things in a very, very limited way. If, if there's an exceptional circumstance that is in a home or in a church to carry out justice. Now, if somebody's abusing their child, guess what? That's a crime, and government ought to be involved. But if I want to bring my children up in the nurture and admission of the Lord, and I want to homeschool my kids and, 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 and do those things, then leave me alone. Let me do it. Now, again... The government is of God. It's from God, by God, of God. And it's designed as a necessary restraint. But you know what? Again, the government sometimes ceases to function by God's design. And when it does that, it, it yields up its authority. You know, if a father in a home is abusive and uh, uh, is, is wrathful uh, and he's supposed to be the leader in the family, but yet he is not leading his family, he's actually uh, hurting his family, then he yields up his right to be the God-given authority in that home. And the government can yield its right, not completely, but it can yield its rights to be that authority. And I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Anybody remember what happened in 2020? About March of 2020? We had this little thing come over here called COVID. And, um, you know, boy, it was a big deal. You know, everybody was going to die if we didn't do something about it. Well, listen, COVID was bad stuff. I had it. And it, it, it about took me out of here. There's no doubt about it. I was very, very, very sick, uh, and I remember it very well. And uh, but uh, COVID didn't kill everybody, and it wasn't going to. And it mattered what state you lived in, but you know the federal government asked everybody to you know stop doing anything. About the only thing that was essential was a grocery store and a liquor store, and a, and a, and a pregnancy. I mean, a, a Planned Parenthood place. That's about it. Everything else shut down. You'll remember that here at Hope Baptist Church, we quit having church. Uh, Governor Kemp said, would you all uh, hold off? And do you remember what the initial hold off was? Does anybody remember the time frame that we were going to not have services? Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. They said, everybody just hunker down for two weeks and then everything's going to be all right. Well, of course, it took two and a half years for everything, in, in a sense, to be all right. But uh, the government uh, said, you know, close down. So we, you know, we went along with that, and we closed down. Uh, I remember that Tybee Beach was even closed, and I'm thinking to myself, what in the world is wrong with you people? Closing Tybee Beach. You couldn't even get on Tybee Beach for a while. And then, of course, uh, again, it matters who your gov governor is because our governor, uh, uh, if we'd had another governor, let me tell you something, we'd have been closed down for good for a while. But our governor tried to open things back up, and he said, well, we're going we're gonna to do this slowly. And if you remember, Hope Baptist Church, we missed Easter at the end of March that year. But does anybody remember when we reopened? We reopened on Mother's Day of that same year. Six weeks we were out. Six weeks. That was it. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, we started meeting again, you know, and... We tried to do the social distancing thing and the, and the mass thing and all that kind of stuff, you know. Matter of fact, I still got some mask up here under the pulpit. <laughs> 2020. 
I got some masks. Anybody need one? It's hilarious. Um, and then, you know, we, we started back. In California, they would not let those churches meet inside their building. And, and it wasn't even after six weeks. This was after a number of months. They persecuted the government, the government of California, the state government and local governments persecuted those churches. And let me tell you something. There, there are some big churches out there in California. And uh, they persecuted those churches. They made those churches meet outside and, and meet outside for a long time and then gave them the dickens about that. And I'm thinking, you know, listen here, folks. We're supposed to be get, taking care of the evil and promoting the good. That's what we're supposed to be doing, but we're doing just the opposite. Now, you think California was bad, uh, even Michigan did the same thing, you know, and if you know who the governor of Michigan is, you know why they did that. The governor of California, you know why they did that. It matters who your governor is. Uh, a church that uh, uh, John III, our son, uh, worked in for a summer, uh, a summer intern. He worked at a church up there during that time, and they, they had to have services outside and so uh, their, their pastor and church, they set up a little platform in the parking lot and made everybody sit in their cars and, and had a little speaker type thing that they could, uh, you know, with their phone, they could plug into and, you know, get to and hear uh, a wireless thing. And then it's the greatest video ever because the preacher's up there preaching, man, and he's getting with it. And, and, and the people, when they want to say amen, they can't say amen, they started blowing their horns. Instead of saying amen, they just blew their horns. Now, that'd be, boy, I'd, I'd almost like to do that in our neighborhood out here. Uh, I'd, I'd get some of these neighbors fired up. But uh, let me tell you, um, it, 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 was, it was a persecution. And, and they sued them, and they fined them even uh, uh, thousands of dollars. And a lot of that stuff finally got taken care of after the churches had to sue the government. Imagine that. government got way out of line but if you think California was bad and you think Michigan was bad let me tell you about Canada Canada uh, the Prime Minister of Canada you know basically hates God and buddy he closed them places down and, and there were some churches that tried to meet and you know what uh, the, the Prime Minister of Canada did to those folks and the local government did to those folks they actually sent the police in there and they dragged those preachers out and put them in jail now, a liquor store could be open, but a church, I don't know. Now, does that tell you anything about the things of God, folks? Does that tell you anything? Do y'all think that uh, the government then was of God or of Satan? Of Satan. And uh, it's, it's very sad. Now, some of that's been rectified to an extent, but there's still a lot of that mess out there. And a lot of persecution and how sad that is that's not what the government's supposed to do the government is supposed to promote good restrain evil and promote good all right you see a verse up there from proverbs 20 26. see the book of proverbs again has a lot to say about how a king's supposed to rule I, again i've shared some of these things on sunday night and wednesday nights um, and it says, a wise king scattereth the wicked and bringeth the wheel over them. Wow. A wise king scattereth the wicked and bringeth the wheel over them. Solomon, of course, was a wise king. He knew all about how to be a good king because he was a good king. For most of his reign. And biblical wisdom. And, and you know what our leaders should pray for? You know what our leaders should pray for every day? They should pray for biblical wisdom. And we should pray for biblical wisdom for them. But bis biblical wisdom starts with proper respect for God and his will. 
And again, God has given government not for all these things that's going on, many of these things that's going on in our world. I, I guess in a sense they have their place, but it's to restrain evil. That uh, when somebody is guilty of a crime, they should be punished. And listen, if you, if you follow the justice system today and you follow the news today, you know that we, we are going backwards instead of forwards with that. Why do people kill and steal? Why do they kill and steal? Because they can. Listen, we're, we're, we're getting close. We're, we're not there yet, thank the Lord, but we're getting close to the days of the judges where it says, in, their, in those days there was no king in Israel, no king at, at all. And in our day we have a king that's not doing right in many ways, and, and in many instances. And then it says, everybody did that which was right in their own eyes. What a mess. You talk about a mess. See, the king, the president, the congress, the governor, uh, uh, all of the state of Georgia, the mayor of Savannah, the Chatham County Commission, all the city aldermen, all of these people, let me tell you something, they should praise good people, make the wicked fear, and separate the wicked from the good. People are sinners, and they're going to do bad. We had, um, you know, here in Savannah even, you have, you have gangs. Uh, you have bad people. You see these shootings that go on. A lot of times it's, it's, it's gangs, you know, shooting at one another. How many of you remember the name Ricky Gibbons? Anybody remember the name Ricky Gibbons? This has been 20, 25 years ago. Ricky Gibbons was in charge of a gang here in town. And you know what, uh, how to get in the gang? You know how you got in the gang? You had to go kill a white person. You had to go kill a white person. There was a, um, I remember the story of a lady, you, uh, as, as you're going down Abercorn, and you get to like uh, 63rd, let's see, then we're going on a little further. We're probably about 58, 55th Street. There's a little park over there on the side, uh, near, I guess near Washington. This lady's out walking her dog one day, minding her own business. One of those gang members comes up there and shoots her dead just because. Now, thank the Lord they finally caught those people and they put them in jail and they're still in jail, which is what they need to be. But, I mean, people just randomly, and, and you see this all the time, and you hear this on the news. And, 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 it's, and it's very sad, and they can. But what's happening in a lot of places, we're, we're feeling sorry for the criminals instead of the victims. And people are letting the criminals get back out on the streets, and what are they doing? And then they, they uh, uh, go back out and commit a crime, and then you read about their, their rap sheet, and you see it's this long, and, and constantly... I'm telling Dana, we, we see this on the news and we see it on the TV and I say, why is this guy walking the streets? We ought to put the judges in jail. Amen. We ought to put people in jail who are not enforcing the laws, the district attorneys and others. Because the Bible says a wise king will scatter the wicked and bring the wheel over them. We don't, have to, we don't have to be misinformed on what the government's supposed to do. God tells us right here. And resisting this authority is to resist God himself. See, great rulers crush criminals. I don't know about y'all, but when all these riots break out and these people have these riots, and we, we just now, you know, this year had all these anti-Semite uh, riots on these college campuses. And you know what I'm saying? Why are y'all letting this happen? Uh, back a few years ago, you know, they had riots in all these different cities and people rioting things and, and burning up uh, businesses and, 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 and lighting all sorts of things on fire and tearing things up. And I said, why are y'all allowing this to happen? Somebody needs to stop this. Wise rulers crush criminals. A powerful king that will not tolerate wicked men is a beautiful thing. (sighs) 
we um, now have got district attorneys who, again, will not enforce the laws and will allow people to walk the streets. And it's not right. Do you know there's some places? By the way, I, I mentioned uh, stealing earlier. Do you know there's there's some places now they've they've uh, they had so much of that and and had a hard time stopping it, which you it can be stopped, folks. It can be stopped. Um, to where if you steal, uh, if if I can remember this right. Uh, Seven hundred dollars or less stuff, then we're not going to prosecute you. We're not going to arrest you. We're not going to prosecute you. Imagine that. So you know what I would do if I was a thief? I I'd make sure that I every trip I went in there it was about six hundred and ninety nine dollars. Man, you could walk out with a whole bunch of stuff if you went in there every day. And walked out with $699 worth of stuff. And that's exactly what's going on. And uh, let me see what time it is. This idea of bringing the wheel and, and winnowing out or separating has to do with the way that uh, in Bible days they would take care of the wheat. Y'all know how they would do that? They would get the wheel, you know, and they'd run over that. And then they'd put it on the, the board, and then they'd flip it up in the air, and the chaff would go this way. But if you, if you, if you know anything about these wheels, these are heavy wheels. I mean, you, you wouldn't want these wheels to run over you, I can tell you. But it would run over this grain, and I mean, it was heavy. And, and that's the idea, that the, the, um, the government, a wise king, will bring the wheel over them and crush them and, and not allow that to take place. We're, and see, all of these things, when, when they allow shoplifting like that, guess, guess who really gets uh, affected by that? Me and you. Somebody steals something from Home Depot and walks out of there. Guess what Home Depot does? Well, uh, they don't do anything about it per se, but I'll tell, you what they, I'll tell you one thing they will do. When you go back in there the next week, uh, the price that you wanted for something's about a dollar or two more than what it was last week. What are you doing? You're paying for the guy that just stole the stuff. You know why your auto insurance is so high? Well, it has something to do with car, but a lot of it has to do with insurance fraud. And, you know, it's, 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 they, it, they just have a hard time finding these people and getting done right. And let me, let me say this. People want to feel sorry for criminals. Say, well, Pastor, you just don't know about their upbringing. Uh, you just don't know what kind of life they've had. You don't know their circumstances in life. You, you know, they're, they're just really not responsible for what they do. And let me tell you something. There's plenty of psychologists that will make every excuse for them. But I want you to hear the truth this morning. Everyone has the opportunity to do right. I don't care what your upbringing is. I don't care what kind of family you had. I don't care what kind of circumstances you lived in. Uh, let me tell you something. You, sh you show me plenty of stories of people that lived in bad circumstances and turned out bad. I'll show you a lot of uh, uh, people who were in bad circumstances and turned out good. Everybody wants to blame their circumstances. But you know what? The truth is everybody has the opportunity to do right. To do right. You can do right. You don't have to be a thief. You don't have to be a murderer. You don't have to be a rapist. You don't have to be uh, an adulterer. You don't have to be uh, 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 a kidnapper. You don't have to be a bank robber. Everybody has the opportunity to do right. You know what a wise ruler will do? They'll say, we want to seek a quiet and peaceable life for their productive citizens. And the only way that can happen if the wicked are scattered and crushed. Do you know how many people are on death row this morning in America? Do you know? Do you know?
you know how many people are on death row in America. These, these are the most heinous monsters of all. Kill people. And many of them kill many people. Right now, and, and of course there's a whole lot of people who ended up in prison with uh, parole, you know, uh, and with no possibility of parole. I mean, they, they have to live there with no possibility of parole. But then there's some who've been given a death sentence. And right now in America, there are 2,500 people on death row. And of course, you know how that goes. It, it takes about 20 years or more for somebody to get through all their appeals and all their whining and crying to finally take their life. And some of them never get that. Can I say to you that one cent spent on their upkeep is a waste? And it actually encourages crime. Let me tell you something. Uh, we talked about shoplifting a minute ago. Go to some countries in the Mideast and shoplift. You know what they do to you? They'll cut your hands off. I got news for you. I don't think they have many shoplifters over there. <laughs> By the way, in the Old Testament, what was capital punishment? Does anybody know what the capital punishment in the Old Testament was? Stoning. Stoning. You read the law of Moses. Do you know that a child, a child, a teenager who rebelled against his mom and dad could be brought before Moses and the law and could be stoned to death. Did you know that? I bet there wasn't a whole lot of rebellion going on. Do you know an adulterer in the, in the Old Testament? The adulterer and, or the adulteress and the, uh, uh, both parties could be stoned to death. But criminals could be stoned to death. You know why stoning was involved? Well, it was cheap. And I can tell you this much, it, there's pl they're plentiful. I've been there. There's plenty of them all around. Now, rulers should restrain evil and promote good. That's their main job. And not only political rulers, but may I say rulers in the home. Rulers uh, at work. You know what a boss should do? They should restrain evil and promote good. They should encourage those that want to work hard. And then get rid of those that don't. A, a father should uh, restrain evil in his home and promote good in his home. A, a, a pastor is in the same boat. Let me, let me finish up. You know, not all rulers are wise, right? Not all rulers are wise. Some simply fail to fulfill their calling from God. And then others, others refuse to distinguish between good and evil. And there are many, however, who call evil good and good evil. And in many ways, that's where we're living at. They will make excuses for the wicked, and they will fail to judge with an even hand. But a wise ruler will enforce one law for all, the rich and the poor, Democrats, Republicans, educated, uneducated, male, female, powerful and weak, black, white, uh, red or yellow, it doesn't matter should enforce one law for all. And that wise ruler is going to winnow the wicked. Swift and certain punishment is very important. And let me finish with this. There's a ruler coming one day who is going to establish peace and he's going to take care of the wicked. He's going to take care of them. He's going to come again, the Lord Jesus Christ, with his mighty angels and flaming fire for vengeance on all those who reject God and disobey the gospel. He's not going to be liked by them. 
but he sure is going to be admired and loved by us. By those who love the gospel. And I say to you, if you don't know him today, today is the day of salvation. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. We're not going to have an invitation per se this morning. If you're here today and there's some need in your life, then uh, you let me know before you leave. Or you can call me this week and we can chat about that. But uh, this morning as we think about this message, let's pray for America. Pray for our country. Pray for us to be the right kind of citizens and to have wisdom in this upcoming election. America needs to get right with God. I'm thankful for that uh, wonderful remnant, though, those of us who do know him, and we want to do right, and let's continue to do so. And we're just going to do right, no matter what others do. That's what we're going to do. Father, I thank you for your word today, and thank you for these, these thoughts. And I pray, Lord, that um, our rulers will be wise. They'll restrain evil, promote good. They'll promote righteousness. They'll have biblical wisdom, biblical righteousness. Lord, we're so far away from you. We've allowed so many things to come into our country that's just the opposite, Lord, of what you tell us in your word. And it's very sad. So we pray for America to get right with God. Lord, may we be right with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming out today and for listening to that.